Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Sana Makbood, with you at BTB World. In today's show, we will be taking a look at uh, the many unfortunate events that have taken place today. And of course, uh, the unfortunate political circumstances that we have found ourselves in for quite some time now. A lot of which, of course, has been centered around the former Prime Minister and PTI Chairman Imran Khan. A series of legal proceedings are underway against the PTI Chairman. And there have been uh, repeated uh, summons uh, with regards to his appearances in court. Uh, all of which he has uh, failed to do so. Uh, and we have seen that the kind of relief that has been given to the PTI chairman seem to be extending again and again with non-bailable arrest warrants issued previously as well and even now. But this time around, unfortunately, there were clashes uh, between the police and the PTI supporters uh, leading all the way to his residence in Zaman Park. We also saw uh, the entire day uh, in various parts of the country uh, with uh, protests uh, coming up in different locations with PTI supporters after the call of the PTI chairman uh, where he talked about how the police has arrived to arrest him and uh, the supporters need to come out and stop that at all circumstances and also go ahead uh, with the kind of hakiki azadi that he keeps referring to uh, even if uh, Imran Khan is out of the picture. Um, and of course because of this call we saw the protests uh, springing up in various parts of the country and unfortunately clashes also occurring between the police and uh, the PTI protesters, uh, which uh, according to last reports that have come in is still ongoing. And it seems that uh, something that the court has ordered, which is part of the way that legal proceedings go ahead and after so many exemptions is still not being conducted by the PTI chairman and uh, what is being chosen uh, instead is uh, these uh, clashes and the protests that have erupted throughout the country. And it, it is indeed, of course, unfortunate the way that we have seen uh, the evolving situation um, the president has also tweeted regarding uh, this particular development, saying he's deeply saddened, but he also points towards the government's priority and talks about how he's worried about Imran Khan's safety and security as he would be with any other politician. We'll, of, of course, explore uh, this in further detail as well in our discussion. But we also want to uh, take a deeper look at where the PTI chairman stands today in terms of the legal proceedings and the kind of arguments that are being given by his counsel. We also know uh, that the plea to um, hear uh, the uh, issues with regard to the arrest warrants that have been uh, issued in the Tosha Khana reference is now going to be heard tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to see uh, whether or not uh, this will result in any end to the chaos that has started today. There is also issue being raised uh, regarding the deadline of 18th of March and why the arrest is important today. Uh, but we're also going to get a legal opinion uh, with regards to that. In the meantime, we will also see what the Prime Minister had to say in an interview to a private news channel where he spoke about various issues uh, regarding the IMF uh, and the way that uh, the kind of circumstances that we're seeing today have been inherited by the previous regime. Also talking about how uh, this was something that he wasn't aware, the kind of trust deficit that had existed uh, because of the way the previous regime carried out its policies and was not able to meet the conditions and the commitments made to the IMF which is what uh, he has referred to as the reason uh, being uh, behind the delay with the IMF negotiations and the kind of efforts that the current government had to make in this regard. He also, of course, talked about various other issues stemming in uh, from Imran Khan's regime and spoke about the court appearance as well, saying that this is uh, the legal, these are the legal cases that haven't been started by him and that the law must take its course. And this is what needs to happen moving ahead as well and why it is not happening uh, when uh, so much relief has been given to him in the past as well. Uh, there was also, of course, uh, talk about the uh, current army chief's appointment, what he said was done on merit, and then, of course, various others, uh, other issues relating to the previous regime and the kind of uh, foreign policy uh, considerations that Pakistan will have to take a look at. So we're going to try and explore that in further detail in the show as well and try and understand what the stance is of the current political setup uh, with regards to the way that uh, the PTI chairman's legal proceedings seem to be coming about and what his political stance is at the moment. For this and more, as always in the studios, I have been joined by senior analyst Farooq Latafi. We've also been joined online by our guest Dr. Niaz Murtaza, who's a political analyst, and uh, by Mr. Sardar Balakshir Khosa, who's advocate Supreme Court. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being a part 
of the show today. And let me start with you, Kosa Saab, because we want to, of course, understand the legal aspects of uh, today's dynamics first and foremost. Uh, a lot of the issues uh, surrounding the non-bailable arrest warrants are being discussed, particularly surrounding the deadline of the 18th of March. But I want you to also contextualize that for us, considering what has happened in the past, how non-bailable arrest warrants were even issued before. And this is something that is happening after uh, various uh, failures uh, to uh, appear before the court uh, by the PTI chairman, all of which were met with relief by the courts. But now it seems that the courts may be running out of patience. Uh, what do you think um, is the uh, legal standing with regards to the deadline of March 18th, and especially with regards to uh, what uh, conduct has been uh, done today in order to arrest the PTI chairman? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And thank you very much, Sana, for taking me on the show and the, the honorable panelists. I just consider myself a student of law, and I'll talk what the law says and the Constitution says. And I will. Uh, I always request people. It's always first Pakistan, and then anything else in this world. Which if Pakistan exists, we exist. Anyway, nevertheless. Uh, we every day see in the courts of law, before Islamabad High Court, even before Pindi, even before the district courts, even in Karachi, even in KPK, because the domain of practice of uh, our chamber is all over in Pakistan. And that's a very normal thing when somebody's uh, bailable, I will repeat, bailable warrants are being issued. Bailable warrants means the person needs to get or needs to be, or needs to have in person appearing before the court of law. So that is the definition of law which says the person has to appear himself or herself before the court of law against whom an allegation has been leveled and under a complaint or under an FIR, because in this case, under 137 section of the Election Act, a complaint has been filed before the learned district and session judge in which the honorable, prime, uh, honorable former Prime Minister Imran Khan and the PTI chairman has been summoned and he has been avoiding uh, uh, his appearance for the reasons best known to him, maybe security reasons that may, be, may exist, maybe other reasons which is best known to him or the, party or the party policy makers. But he has to get himself appeared before the court of law. I've read and gone through the Islamabad uh, Chief Justice order which uh, clearly says i will repeat which clearly says there is nothing wrong in the order of the worthy district and session judge before whom the complaint is pending who has summoned imran khan and he has not been able to present himself in person before right. the court uh, of law because I, the I charge can that, only Kosa be Right, but I also, also want to understand uh, that uh, non-bailable arrest warrants were issued before and then, of course, the transitory bail was uh, uh, granted uh, to the PTI chairman. And now, of course, there is another instance of the non-bailable arrest warrants. We have the police at Zaman Park, but it seems that because previously he has gotten away with, uh, with not appearing before the courts, even though there was a non-bailable arrest warrant, do you think that th this could possibly be just another instance where he gets to avoid this? You see, he can easily avoid this because it is uh, it is very simple. It is not that he is going to get arrested and he is going to be hanged or he is going to get convicted. I don't know why Imran Khan is making show out of it. He is he's trying to get political, uh, like elections are on its way. Why he is doing this? You see, I have repeatedly said so. First, Pakistan. Then anything else in this country. You are taking the bloodshed of the innocent people and the police who are the, our security, who work for us who work for our life and liberty. But you see, on the other hand, the non-bailable warrants does not mean to arrest him. I will repeat, the law says it does not mean to arrest him. It means only to take him and produce him before the court of law where he submits his bail bond, his, which is called, in our language, it is called machalakas to be presented before the court of law because in its maximum punishment is three years, or 1,100 uh, 1, fine, or both, if he is found guilty. So meaning thereby, it is a bailable offense, and nor the court has directed uh, the government to arrest him, neither the court has directed to ID to arrest him, the court has simply directed the concerned SHO 
to produce i will repeat the word to produce imran khan the accused before the court of law because we, without him the charge cannot be framed and even right. in the islamabad high court the chief justice has categorically said so in the order of the judicial magistrate the district and session judge there is nothing wrong there is nothing wrong but keeping in view the security hazard and the life threat i give i suspend these warrants till 13th and he has to the word is he has to produce physically himself before the court of law right. i don't know why this chaos is being curated from both sides right absolutely i i understand and we we will we'll go to our uh, panelist uh, for further explanation regarding why that's happening so that we can all understand that and i'm glad you pointed out uh, the uh, the language of uh, producing him instead of arresting him uh, because uh, this seems to also play a big part as to what is being capitalized on perhaps by the pti chairman dr nias the circumstances today are of course unfortunate but perhaps not something that we haven't seen before in terms of the kind of uh, clashes that exist uh, on the behest of uh, politicians and decision makers and we see that uh, the the supporters of the public at large uh, are uh, facing uh, whatever is going on on the streets uh, while uh, the uh, decision makers of the politician are safe um, when we talk about these issues, what uh, uh, Khosa Saab was earlier referring to, it seems that the only uh, thing that is being gained out of this is political malice. Do you think that that is the uh, only objective at this moment of the PTI chairman and that it somehow is being lost uh, in the way that he's speaking about Hakiki Azadi march to his protesters? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, everything about the PTI politics is about drama, hype, whipping up emotions, making people angry. Uh, because, you know, that's what uh, Imran Khan and PTI's politics is. That's the only way that, you know, they thrive and survive uh, is to, you know, uh, make people feel that, you know, there's a huge conspiracy going all the time. You know, sometimes it's a uh, dharna, sometimes it's long marches, sometimes it's threats to his life. So, you know, an endless, uh, you know, uh, drama. It's like, you know, our TV serials every new, uh, you know, uh, serial uh, part of it, and that's what you have with PTI. In fact, with PTI, it's not even weekly. Sometimes you have, you know, a new uh, serial uh, every two or three days. So that's what it's all about. You know, if you look at, you know, the legality of it, the fact is that, uh, you know, the court has been asking him several times to, you know, come and produce himself before it so that he can be indicted, and he's thoroughly, completely refusing to do that. I mean, if you compare his actions with those of other politicians, you know, who have been arrested and wrongly arrested and convicted, even like, for example, Nawaz Sharif, he was sitting in London and, uh, you know, he just voluntarily came back to Pakistan, leaving his, you know, ill wife uh, behind who later died. He could not even see her. And here's Mr. Imran Khan sitting in uh, Lahore. And he keeps talking about, you know, the rule of law that, he, you know, they adhere to the rule of law and he wants to further the rule of law. And what is he doing? He's first of all not going to the court. And then, you know, when the police is coming, he's creating all this kind of, you know, extreme violence, you know, like about a few hundred or maybe more than a thousand people around his house, you know, acting as kind of a, you know, a vigilante force. You know, this is almost relating to, you know, the kind of things that, TLP does, or even, you know, some of, you know, the more extremist groups that we've had in Pakistan's history. That said, I mean, it's also true that, you know, uh, the only thing that is justifiable at this stage is to, you know, bring him to the court, indict him, and then release him. If the government is planning to, you know, lock him up for long because of political purposes, that would be condemnable, and that should not happen. Uh, as it would be wrong in the case of other politicians. And in fact, it has happened with people, opposition people uh, under PTI. They were kept uh, locked for months and months. That should not happen even with Imran Khan. And despite, you know, the uh, brand of his politics. But yes, there is definitely a need to bring him before the court. Otherwise, you know, it will become a mockery. He will just become above the law, a sort of an untouchable person who is above the law. Yes, uh, don't you think that that sort of perception is already there? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's very much there. That's why it's important to you know, burst it by bringing him or making sure that, you know, he appears next time. Uh, and if that means arresting him, 
illegally then so be it but he has to be produced otherwise you know the law will just become a joke uh, uh, and you know then of course it will have a ripple effect uh, other people will start breaking the law uh, like this so you know mm. despite all the hoopla about you know PTI being a, a, a better type of you know or a different type of uh, party and uh, political brand you know it's even worse than parties like PPP and PMLN who themselves are not much to talk about you know they also flaunt laws in many ways but you know nobody goes as far as PTI right um absolutely uh for the issue with regards to what uh, dr niaz was saying is something that we have discussed plenty of times before in terms of the relief that has been given to the pti chairman and there's of course numerous uh, court appearances that the pti chairman has failed to go to and a lot of the legal experts that we've had on our show uh, keep on referring to how unusual this may be uh, but it seemed that today that may have taken a different course the petition that was filed uh, against the arrest warrants um, was uh, being emphasized by the pti leadership to be heard today uh, but the court refused to do that and in fact it's being done tomorrow and there seems to be a lot of push towards uh, the non-billable arrest warrants that have been issued as well do you think that there is a change in direction and if so why no okay uh, although i wanted to actually address this issue a bit later because i have some inside scoop hmm? and i would like to talk about that later okay. but uh, before that allow me to actually focus on imran khan saab's own behavior today <coughs> and his party's behavior uh, remember whatever pti is doing today is unconscionable why recently one of their poor uh, you know supporter or worker died now if you really think that there is any serious threat uh, do you want more poor people to come in the harm's way this is the first question that i've got but then there is uh, the issue of privilege earlier dr saab was talking about television serials so i actually recall a television serial serial which was very famous when i was growing up it is called uh, chand giran written by asghar nadim sayed mm. and there was a similar kind of siege situation there but today what i felt was imran khan saab for a person who has been challenging all the status quo forces right or he claims to uh, uh, you know challenge them he uh, most certainly wants to assert his own privilege and i give you an example when this whole episode was unfolding i was thinking how many other politicians have resisted arrest in a similar manner and i could not think of many i could think of only uh, you know two examples murza bhutto and akbar bhutti uh, both of them could not survive that kind of a situation and uh, when this happens of course the question then comes to mind that what zardari saab has been talking about the domicile issue that again becomes a privilege and certainly imran khan saab is reasserting that uh, but there is amazing inconsistency in his behavior for example i totally agree with everybody who has spoken earlier and they have said particularly that in this case he, there was no downside mm. he would have just gone there i mean within 24 hours he would have been presented or whenever he was presented then let go there wasn't any possibility of any serious repercussion he seems to have built a bigger case against his own party just now before our eyes and that's why i'm worried that there is such a thing as evil eye yesterday i was saying that they are masters of spin and how they actually reshape mm -hmm. atmospherics now tell that uh, uh, tell what happened uh, 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 today to my yesterday self when i was talking about this because i don't think that there is any image mm -hmm. remedy possible at this moment and then this inconsistency on one side you are standing on container and uh, without any any glass any protection and you don't want to come down and now you don't want to leave your own building your own home the question is why is that happening and i thought at that time uh, that uh, is it uh, something to do with his mental uh, state of mind or something else then i realized something else i heard a story sanam and that that was amazing advice remember the other day when imran khan saab had said that sham mahmud qureshi is going to stay at the party uh, in case he is uh, apprehended after that sham mahmud qureshi also came in front of television in front of camera and he said that i'm going to lead it but then something else happened 
the former first lady who believes in astrology actually told him that uh, Shah Mahmood Qureshi is not the right person for the job. Uh, she thinks that a woman with a name or that starts with alphabet, Urdu alphabet N or A uh, should actually lead the party. And after that, two things happen. One, instead of, uh, you know, uh, individuating and elevating Shah Mahmood Qureshi, uh, Imran Khan Sahib forms a six-member committee which is going to take care of the party. And then his sister Alima Khan also uh, makes her presence felt. Mm. So I think that if you are going to shape your policy based on such kind of decision, astrology, for heaven's sake, then um, I think we all are doomed and perhaps your party is also. Uh, but uh, having said that, in the end, uh, you said exception. Today, there might have, uh, might have been some change of direction. Uh, it also occurred to me, because yesterday, if you remember, I was saying that whenever Imran Khan Saab accuses somebody, burden of proof lies with the accused. Okay. Whenever someone accuses Imran Khan Saab, our court system is such that they ask the accuser to prove their case. So the burden of proof actually, once again, lies not with Imran Khan. Uh, but uh, in this case, there was an exemption. Uh, and we didn't see the immediate, uh, you know, issuance or suspension order. Then I started hearing something very interesting that uh, uh, you have heard about, I mentioned uh, astrology. So I'm going to give you an example of uh, Mercury retrograde, right? Okay. Uh, you know, um, uh, special phases in life. So for the next two months or three months, the, our judiciary is entering into a phase which is going to be more conciliatory towards whom? towards the government, because now the case of appointment of Sindh High Court judges is coming, okay. and there the cooperation of the government is uh, going to be critical. Okay. So today's exemption, if it was exemption, if there isn't going to be a suspension tomorrow, or there isn't going to be some very aggressive response from the court uh, in support of him, Dan Han, then one would attribute that to this kind of a situation. Okay. And I'd like to speak more about that with Kosa Saab because it seems that whenever we have seen such a political dynamics unfold in the country, uh, it seems that the judiciary's uh, involvement and role becomes perhaps even stronger. And in a lot of the instances, especially since the ouster of the former prime minister, we have seen that the uh, Supreme Court has been involved and all eyes have been set on what uh, the court is to decide. And even now, in the number of cases that we see uh, running against Imran Khan um, and the kind of uh, political implications that impact uh, the legal proceedings. It seems that we're unable to uh, distinguish between the institution's role and then of course the political domain in which uh, there are different leaders act and need to uh, conduct themselves. And so given this cur current scenario where we stand today in terms of the political and economic dynamics with the elections looming in KP and Punjab and what Faru has just highlighted as well and then the kind of uh, exemptions that we've seen in the past with the PTI chairman. How do you see the role of the judiciary moving forward and do you whether or not you think that any of these uh, observances are uh, not justified? You see the judiciary, even the judgment of the Supreme Court of Pakistan is very, uh, uh, it's shrouded in mystery because few of the judges, they refuse to sit in the bench and the few judges they have given their detailed judgment and they endly they said we agree with our brother judges so even and it was a decision of the four three then it said the seven three so it's all blurry so we need to see that if some if a judiciary if the honorable chief justice pakistan has to take the sewer motor action again on any illegal act of the which is which which says the sewer motor says it has to be public at large issue the political issue or any issue which is public at large, meaning thereby, or there is any conflict between four provinces, then the Sumo motor has to be taken place, or any petition can be made before the Supreme Court of Pakistan. I think so the basic now responsibility, uh, the political system is not trying to work out, is not trying to help out. Otherwise, as uh, narrated by Pataki Saab and Dr. Saab, it is a simple issue. He just had to go to the court of law and, and submit his bail bonds, and the story is finished. There is no need for his arrest. Even I will again repeat it. I am a student of law. I am studying since last more than 24 years. It happens every day before the courts of law. And the next step, if it does not appear before the court of law, is, is uh, sections 87 and 88. 
CRPC that he will be declared as squander. The ads will be given in, in television, the ads will be given in newspaper. And then wherever Imran Khan goes and if he is being crossed by any police officer, there he will be arrested and, and he will be not arrested, he will not be sent to the jail. He will be arrested, kept in the custody for, for producing him before the court of law, not taking him to any jail. So this is not, I will uh, tell the people of Pakistan, that for God's sake, stop mockering around, stop being a joker, stop uh, making yourself killed. You have a right. sister at home, but you have your sir, mother, you have your children, sir, sir, for God's sake. Right. I, but I want to point out that perhaps more so than the people of Pakistan, it seems that the political uh, leaders that we have of different parties and particularly the PTI chairman may perhaps be more responsible of making a mockery out of uh, the people or the judiciary or what goes on because the, the chaos that has happened today is also a result of the way that this is being portrayed. You keep on talking about uh, him being produced before the courts, but it's all become a matter of his arrest and it's become very heightened with emotional drama with, of course, the PTI followers and the police clashing and perhaps all of this uh, is not something that was warranted by these non bailable arrest warrants that have been issued by the courts. You see, even I will again repeat, it's the government is a, even taking it too serious, which they should have not. They are giving hype to Imran Khan. They should not. There is no orders of the courts to the IG Punjab or IG Islamabad to arrest him. There are only orders of the court. It is the clerk of the court who goes to the house of the person and produce and, and just put it on the door that you are required. If you are not required, then 87 and 88 starts its procedure of the law. I don't know why it's being overdoing on both the sides. So you see, even the, I don't know. He has one of the best lawyers with him who is a very practical lawyer. I, I have no friendship with that lawyer. Other Siddiqui, I think so. Other Siddiqui should have guided him up. Come out and tell people, for God's sake, stop standing here and stop giving your lives. And let's go to Islamabad district court where Tosha Khana case is there. That is the simple end of the story. But making it politicized and then uh, what uh, Pitafi Sahib has said so, that he said, okay, first Shah Mahmood Qureshi Sahib, then a team of the, like, you are not going to get arrested. For God's sake, tell the people of Pakistan. You, the court has only asked to make his non-bailable arrest for protection before the court of law, not taking him to the jail. This needs to be clarified. You see, every leader, whether Imran Khan, whether any political party leader, for God's sake, they, I, either there are two questions which arise into my mind at least, being a student of law. Either he doesn't understand his political uh, lawful uh, uh, issues, or deliberately he is doing this all. If deliberately he is doing this all, then I think so. On the doomsday, the, 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 the blood of the innocent is going to be on the hands of Imran Khan and he's going but, to be but answerable Kosa to Sahib, But Khosa Sahib, why doomsday? Why can't, why can't there be accountability today, here and now? Privilege. Absolutely. He should appear himself before the court of law. If he is innocent, then why this all drama is being created? You see, if somebody has to go to the hospital, he cannot. If somebody is jobless, he has to go, go to his job, he cannot. If somebody is, wants yes, to do anything in, in, regarding in Lahore. Who's holding him accountable well, for deliberately talking about this? You see, the, the only accountable person seems to me as the student of law is Imran Khan. All right. Thank you, Khosa Saab. Uh, Dr. Niaz, uh, the concern, of course, with regards to what is happening is what we have spoken about before as well. And again, it's a matter of concern as to what may, may be the motivations behind what is happening today. But unfortunately, the cost is being paid by the public and uh, by, of course, our police force and others involved who are perhaps not part of these uh, political uh, battles or games that are being played by uh, the PTI leadership. But in terms of the way that the uh, political aspect 
aspects are being highlighted in terms of these legal proceedings. I want to understand in light of what uh, the Prime Minister also spoke about in an interview today that these are cases that haven't been started by the current political setup, that these are cases taking its own legal course and this is something that the government is not involving itself in and just wants uh, what the court has ordered to happen and for uh, the PTI chairman to abide by that. Um, what do you make of these statements in terms of what is going on because there is so much that is perhaps apparent and obvious as to what the court is saying and that is being refuted uh, that when, when we talk about the, the way that it is moving forward with the current political setups involvement in any way it, it doesn't seem to make uh, any sense in terms of what uh, the, the public at large or what the PTI chairman seems to be projecting. Well, of course, you know, that's the excuse that every government makes, you know, even uh, the PTI used to say that we didn't start these cases against PCP and uh, PMLN leaders, they were there even before us. But then, you know, the fact is that the PTI did uh, follow and pursue them with a venom uh, that wasn't there uh, before it came to power. So again, you know, if uh, uh, there is an impression created that, you know, the government is being overzealous in you know pursuing some of these cases and some of the cases are pretty shoddy uh, you know like you know sedition and mutiny and terrorism uh, you know everybody can see that you know those don't really apply to him but now of course the tosha khana case is different there there may be you know a solid basis for you know at least pursuing him and then what happens uh, whether the evidence is strong enough, that, that is for the courts to see. But, you know, Prima says, it does seem to be, you know, a stronger case than some of these other cases like uh, sedition and so on. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, uh, but still, you know, the images that are being created on TV, uh, you know, reflect heavy handedness. There's the risk that, you know, lives may be lost, property may be destroyed. So, you know, caution is still uh, important. And I think, uh, rather than sending the police i think the court should look at the fact whether it's possible to you know start contempt proceedings against him and there the critical issue is whether he's still you know a member of the parliament which i think he is because he was declared winner on one of the seats and if he is then and if the court you know finds him guilty of contempt then he will lose uh, the ability to be in parliament for five years and that may be a much bigger threat to him than sending police and trying to arrest him so I think there are multiple strategies available here, uh, which the court has in hand, and you know, hopefully they will look at you know these aspects whether uh, it would be easier for him to you know uh, make him appear by you know starting contempt proceedings against him. Uh, the other issue, uh, you know, Farooq mentioned, you know, the domicile issue. I'm not so sure about that because you know many people. Uh, I don't think it's the domicile that's working here because people like Nawaz Sharif, Shahbaz Sharif. Hamza, Mariam, or many other uh, 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 PMLN leaders have the same domicile, but they were still arrested and sent to jail uh, repeatedly. Uh, uh, so I think this is, you know, just his own privilege. You know, he's been able to develop this halo around him and, you know, uh, marshal his, you know, blind supporters. So, you know, people are really reluctant to go and, you know, do something about it, given, you know, the precarious political situation, the economic situation. If it goes out of hand, then, you know, it could harm people. But then, you know, of course, you can't submit yourself, the state can't submit itself to blackmail. And ultimately, they'll have to find a way to, you know, bring him to court. It's just, you know, finding the right way of doing it. Absolutely. Um, Farooq, given, of course, uh, the fact that, uh, uh, we don't have a lot of time remaining in KP and Punjab uh, with the election date uh, uh, with the president talking about uh, as the 30th of April and then of course the kind of clashes that we've seen uh, previously as well in the in the campaign that has been led by the PTI chairman and then uh, in reference to the the way that the the clashes have occurred it seems that any sort of intersection between the current political setup and the PTI leaders or their supporters uh, seems to be heightened with tension and friction and unfortunately uh, we have seen uh, a loss of a precious life before and we of course have seen uh, a number of supporters uh, uh, and uh, the police force being engaged today as well and possibly uh, we can see uh, uh, more uh, violence or more loss of lives or injuries in the future as well something of course that we'd all like to avoid but given the current circumstances uh, do you think that uh, the way that we are uh, proceeding towards the election date, we can possibly hope for any sort of smooth conduct of these elections? 
Um, uh, I don't think so, Sana. I don't actually deal in astrology, as you uh, you clearly know. Uh, but uh, there are a couple of things that I actually wanted to uh, put in here. Uh, first of all, I want to commend the optimism of uh, do uh, Dr. B Niaz Murza and also Kosa Saab, uh, especially uh, regarding this domicile business, right? I've, uh, there was a subtle uh, nuance that perhaps uh, nuance that was missed by uh, our honorable guest, uh, and that was that I was not saying that it is my opinion. I was quoting uh, Zardari Saab. And uh, uh, despite that he has given certain examples, the examples that I gave, and there's one more, the in the end, the result was lethal, right? Mm. Uh, the exemptions that have been mentioned, none of that, from fortunately, had that kind of conclusion. So there is something to be said about that as well. But uh, you know, uh, here's the simple thing. I vowed, I made one promise to myself, and I, uh, one year ago I was, undergoing heart surgery and I didn't know whether I will live long or not. Uh, I said that I'm not going to spare anyone, including myself. So I'm going to be very honest about the way media has been handling it also. Uh, particularly, and uh, uh, there are two sides of it. One side, of course, which is uh, more amenable to the government side, uh, amazing reporting from their side as well. Mm. I mean, one reporter, and I, I usually don't call reporters charlatans, but this is an amazing man. Uh, when uh, uh, Manawa attack was taking place in uh, Lahore, at that time this, m this man was sitting in a ditch and reporting as if uh, firing is going on. And then the cameraman just lifted the uh, camera and we saw that people were walking all behind him, right? That kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, manipulation of images and all those things. So today that gentleman was actually trying to actually present it as if the, the Gilgit Baltistan police that was present on the premise uh, was actually there and they were ready to fight our, you know, uh, Punjab's police or Islamabad police. That wasn't the case. They were there as an escort to, uh, you know, a minister that was already present there from Gilgit Baltistan. This was shoddy reporting from the positive side, so called positive side. The other side keeps on spinning and spinning and spinning. Uh, for example, this amazing discussion about Imran Khan facing 80, 80 cases. This warrant or these summons are not about any of those uh, frivolous cases that mm. might have been registered anywhere. There are four or five core cases that he is facing. And because of that, he keeps on, he is urged to uh, present himself before the court. Last time he was in Islamabad and he went to three, three judges, but his manner even there was as if you know, the court had to beg for him to produce himself. Mm. Had he gone there, uh, the fourth one, today's incident would not have happened. Of course. He, he skipped that. Even now, he could have actually curtailed this issue, uh, nipped the, uh, the evil in its bud, but he did not choose to do it. So I'm seriously concerned. And by the way, regarding the violence and that might be there, one thing that we have seen today is that uh, police actually is being on the receiving end of violence, right? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't differentiate between the, the people who are on one side or the other, but the only problem is these people are there to enforce law, mm. right? And they were being stoned. I don't understand what kind of psychology is under, you know, in play here. That you are asking your supporters to be human shield and then to physically attack the police. Hmm. Do you think how big a crime that itself is? And had there not been this privilege, this exemption, this extra exception, had it been you or I, we would have been taken to cleaners, Sana, honestly. And I, I tell you, I mean, I come from landed background as well. I think I can replicate this model at least in my own village, ancestral village. But my concern is that I haven't seen any exemption, any, any example of this sort, hmm. where somebody is for trivial case, a very right. small case, where you're not going to be punished and they, it is not life or death. Right. You're using your supporters in, as human shield. And those poor Johnnies are being egged on. I mean, Shah Mahmood Qureshi sahab comes in front of camera and says, we don't uh, want more dead bodies. For heaven's sake, why uh, have you taken 
it to that kind of pitch. Exactly. Why is there any need to, uh, for anybody to die? Absolutely. You, th that would imply you want that kind of a thing. Mm. And, and they have uh, so much uh, so have said that as well, unfortunately coming in uh, from uh, the leader of a major political party. But of course, uh, much remains to be seen as what's going to happen. Thank you, Farooq, for thank of you. course sharing your views as always. And so thank you, Dr. Niaz Murtaza, and thank you, Mr. Sitar Balak Sheikhosa, for joining us and being a part of the discussion. It is indeed unfortunate in terms of the kind of events we've seen today, but they're reflective of so much more uh, that we have uh, to see and what we've seen in the past. And I know Kosa Sabi wanted to add something. Unfortunately, we are really out of time. But thank you very much for being a part of the discussion. We'll see you tomorrow.